Hello students, welcome to Zoology Classroom. Myself, Yel Mahesh, Assistant Professor of Zoology, working in Tara Government Degree College, Sangareti. In today's class, we are going to discuss about digestion of carbohydrates. So before entering into our topic, let us know what is digestion. Digestion is nothing but it is a process of hydrolysis of large and complex molecules of foodstuffs. By this process, uh, these uh, larger food molecules, they are converted into smaller uh, food particles. Uh, preferably, uh, these smaller particles, they would be water-soluble molecules. So that these water-soluble smaller molecules, they will be easily absorbed into our digestive system or uh, into our body. So that our body will be able to utilize these uh, eaten food or digested food material. So digestion of macromolecules also promotes the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins and certain minerals. Actually, these fat-soluble vitamins and minerals, they are, uh, by themselves, they are very smaller molecules. They need not to be broken down into further smaller molecules. But for the absorption of these uh, uh, fat-soluble vitamins or certain other uh, minerals, uh, the digestion of macromolecules is very, very essential. So in this way, digestion is very important uh, uh, in breaking down the larger particles into smaller particles so that our body uh, will absorb them into uh, our body. So in this uh, slide, we can see that uh, what happens in this uh, process of digestion. See, in this thing, uh, let me choose a highlighter. So uh, in this process of digestion, what's happening are uh, large molecules by the process of digestion, they are being converted into smaller molecules. And these smaller molecules, uh, they will be, there will be different types of smaller molecules uh, uh, like vitamins, minerals, monosaccharides and three amino acids and uh, fatty acids also will be there. And all these smaller molecules, they will be formed as a result of this process of digestion. So finally, after the digestion is completed, what happens? These smaller molecules like vitamins, minerals, monosaccharides, free amino acids, they will be absorbed into the blood. And this, uh, you know, blood uh, uh, supplies all these digested smaller molecules to all body parts in our So next, uh, what happens uh, to the absorbed food in our body? So we have seen that what is the definition of uh, digestion. And after the digestion is completed, the digested food materials will be absorbed into our body. So what happens to the absorbed food uh, in our body? Mostly these absorbed food materials, again, they will be converted into complex molecules. So the food before digestion, it will be uh, in complex molecule form. As a result of digestion, it is being converted into simpler molecules or smaller molecules so that uh, these smaller molecules, uh, they will be absorbed into our body. After the absorption is, is finished and after the food materials are supplied to all our body parts, then what's happening, all these uh, uh, smaller molecules, again, most of them are, again, they are converted into complex molecules. So then what is the need of digesting them? So why do we need to digest them? Uh, even uh, after the digestion is completed, again, these are again, they are being converted into complex molecules. Then why should we digest them? Instead, directly we can uh, uh, absorb them into our body. So what is the need of this digestion? The answer is that uh, 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 absorbing the complex molecules is not uh, possible in our body. Why? Because uh, absorption surface area is present uh, in the smaller intestine. In small intestine, also, all these molecules, they have to enter into the cells through the plasma membranes. As the plasma membrane is a, a very selective permeability, selectively permeable membrane, so that it will not allow all molecules enter into the cell. So only smaller molecules will be able to enter into our body. So for that purpose, even though we need complex molecules in our body, we cannot directly absorb them. So 
to make it possible to enter into the body, first of all, we have to convert them into smaller molecules. Again, after converting into uh, them into complex molecules, once they enter into our body. So for that purpose, the digestion is very, very essential. Next, uh, let us see how many types of digestion processes are there in the animal kingdom. So if we observe in the animal kingdom, uh, mo mostly two types of digestion processes are there. One is intracellular digestion and the second one is extracellular digestion. Let us know what is the difference between these two types of digestive processes. First one is intracellular digestion. So in intracellular digestion, what happens, the digest uh, digestion takes place inside the cell. So for example, this intracellular digestion takes place in almost all protozoans. So in this uh, animals, food particles are taken into the cells by the process of, called as endocytosis. And uh, after the endocytosis uh, is finished, the food particles will be present inside the cell or inside the body of the organism. So once the complex molecules, they are inside the cell, then there the digestion process takes place. And this digestion takes place uh, in a special cell organelles called food vacuum. And this digestion takes uh, place uh, in a uh, safe uh, uh, compartment. And uh, this compartment, uh, as I have already told, uh, it is called as food vacuole, and food vacuoles are enclosed by a membrane. So that in this uh, type of digestion, digestion is taking place inside the cells or inside the body of the organism. So as it is occurring inside the cell, this type of uh, digestion is called as intracellular digestion. So intracellular digestion is very common in primitive animals like protozoans and uh, in coriferans also and in some nidarians also we can see this intracellular digestion. And the uh, next uh, type of uh, digestive process is called as extracellular digestion. Extracellular digestion is very common in higher level of animals. In these organisms, digestion takes place uh, uh, even it occurs inside the bodies of the organisms, but, but not inside the cells. Uh, instead of uh, inside the cells, the digestion takes place outside the cells uh, to facilitate the process of digestion. These organisms, they have developed a special type of uh, uh, system called as digestive system or gastrointestinal system. So in these organisms, uh, a pipe-like structure, a tube-like structure has been developed to uh, digest the engulfed or ingested food materials. So even though it is occurring inside the body, but the digestion is not taking place inside the cells, but outside the cells in a lumen. So that uh, as the process is occurring outside the cells, but not outside the body, you, you, we need not to forget about that. It is occurring inside the body only, but outside the cells. So that uh, this type of uh, digestion is called as extracellular digestion. So in this extracellular digestion, uh, hydrolysis occurs outside the cells. Hydrolysis is nothing but digestion. So when a food material or when a material, when a chemical compound reacts with water, it will be broken down into smaller molecules. So this uh, lysis process or digesting process uh, occurs uh, in presence of water. Then that process is called as hydrolysis. Uh, so this hydrolysis, uh, in other words, digestion takes place outside the cells in elementary canal or gastrovascular cavity or gastrointestinal system. Advantage of this extracellular digestion is that it allows the animal to digest larger prey or larger food particles uh, than can be intracellularly digested. So in the previous slide, we have seen that in intracellular digestion, the you know, complex molecules will be digested inside the cells. But in those organisms, those organisms, they cannot take uh, larger um, food particles or larger food materials. They cannot eat, uh, they cannot engulf, or they cannot endocyte also is uh, the larger molecules. But these organisms which practice this extracellular digestion, they can easily uh, eat bigger food particles so that um, uh, uh, they can eat a lot of food and they can eat bigger size food and they can easily digest them. So this is the benefit of this extracellular digestion. So this extracellular digestion uh, starts from this uh, nidarians to the cardates, uh, even in humans also, the extracellular digestion only taking place. Apart from extracellular digestion, to uh, some extent, uh, 
inside our body's uh, intracellular digestion also may be uh, present or uh, may occur at times, but not all the times. At times, uh, intracellular digestion also occurs inside our body cells. But, but mostly uh, in our digestive system, only extracellular digestion takes place. So these are the two types of digestive processes that can be seen in the animal kingdom. And coming to the uh, 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 extracellular digestion, so the extracellular digestion takes place uh, uh, in the digestive system. So in this uh, diagram, in this slide, you can see the digestive system of the human beings. So we are uh, well aware of this diagram. So the digestive system starts with mouth and uh, it ends with anus. Uh, so in between these two openings, uh, mouth and anus, uh, the tube-like structure is called the gastrointestinal system or gastrovascular system or digestive system, GIT, gastrointestinal tract. So all these are the names of the same thing. So in this uh, pipe-like uh, thing, the extracellular digestion takes place. So in this system, uh, various parts are there like mouth, uh, stomach, pancreas, uh, liver, gallbladder, small intestine, and large intestine. So out of all these body parts, these things, uh, pancreas, liver, and mm, these are the glands which help in process of digestion. So now let us move to the next slide. So the main part of our topic uh, that is water. Uh, carbohydrates, uh, uh, digestion of carbohydrates. So before entering into our uh, original topic or uh, real topic, uh, let us know what are carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are nothing but they are sugars or starches or fibers found uh, uh, in fruits, grains, vegetables and milk products. So we can find these carbohydrates uh, in fruits, grains, food grains like cereals, uh, jova, uh, like all those grains, food grains, and vegetables, and milk products, uh, uh, they will give us a carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are one of the most important food groups in the diet. So they are very, very important in our diet, and they provide essential elements that the body needs for instant energy production and various vital functions. So for our uh, uh, livelihood, we need energy. Without energy, we cannot survive. Uh, so, for every activity that occurs in our body, energy is very, very essential. So, this energy will be uh, provided by these uh, carbohydrates only, so that these are very, very essential elements. Apart from giving energy, they are also uh, playing a crucial role in various other vital functions inside our body. So, that's why they are considered as a, a very essential elements. And uh, food sources that are rich in carbohydrates include cereals, root crops, tubers, sugars, pulses, legumes, vegetables, fruits, and milk products. And grains and vegetables such as rice, wheat, maize, barley, potatoes, yams, cassava, and sweet potatoes are also sweet potatoes are also rich in starch. Uh, so uh, this is about the introduction to carbohydrates. So digestion of carbohydrates. So so what type of molecules will are present inside the carbohydrates? Uh, if we observe that thing, we can know that uh, the principal dietary carbohydrates uh, are in the form of polysaccharides, uh, disaccharides, and uh, to some extent monosaccharides also will be there. So monosaccharides are the, they are the simplest molecules as uh, smaller molecules. They need not to be digested anymore. But the polysaccharides, they are very bigger molecules. They are like... Uh, Polymers, so they need to be digested in order to absorb them into our body. And disaccharides also, they also do need to be digested. And monosaccharides, as they are very simpler molecules or smaller molecules, they cannot be broken down further. So like this, carbohydrates are uh, classified based on the complexity of their structure into polysaccharides, disaccharides, and oligosaccharides also will be there another group, and monosaccharides. So the hydrolysis of glycosidic bonds is carried out by a group of enzymes called glycosidases. So all these carbohydrates, uh, carbohydrates, they will be formed uh, by the uh, glycosidic bonds in between monosaccharides. So these glycosidic bonds have to be broken down in order to digest them. So the breaking of these glycosidic bonds, or hydrolysis of these glycosidic bonds will be achieved uh, with the help of uh, enzymes called glycosidases. 
So carbohydrates present in the diet, as I have already told, there are three types of uh, carbohydrates are present in our food, monosaccharides. So monosaccharides, uh, examples for monosaccharides are glucose, fructose, and pentose. So glucose and fructose, these two are, uh, uh, they are uh, hexoges. They have six carbons in them, so that they are called as hexoges. Apart from these hexoges, pentoses are also will be there. Uh, like uh, deoxyribose and ribose. So these are the monosaccharides and coming to disaccharides, lactose, which is present, uh, which will be present in milk and malt foods. Uh, it is present in uh, some cereals and uh, sucrose, uh, which is present in sugar or sugar cane. And coming to polysaccharides, polysaccharides uh, comprises the major part of our food and uh, starch and glycogen are examples for polysaccharides. So starch is uh, uh, present in the cereals and rice, wheat, and all those things, we can find this starch only. And glycogen, it is considered as animal starch. In uh, animal meat, uh, we can find some amount of glycogen. So these are the three different types of carbohydrates, uh, carbohydrates uh, present in our body, uh, sorry, in our diet. So what happens to these carbohydrates uh, once we have them into our digestive system? So in GIT, GIT means gastrointestinal tract, in other words, uh, digestive system. So in digestive system, all these complex uh, molecules are complex carbohydrates. What are complex carbohydrates? Polysaccharides are complex uh, carbohydrates. So and, uh, to some extent, the disaccharides are also. So these two type of uh, disaccharides and polysaccharides, they are converted into simpler molecules uh, called as monosaccharides. And these monosaccharides are they are, uh, they are the absorbable forms of the carbohydrates. Our body can absorb only monosaccharides, but not the disaccharides and polysaccharides. So the disaccharides, polysaccharides, and uh, another group of carbohydrates, uh, oligosaccharides, they will be uh, converted into simpler monosaccharides so that our body will absorb these food material. So examples for these monosaccharides, in this slide we can see the uh, uh, chemical structure of these uh, monosaccharides. Uh, the upper one is a glucose, middle one is the structure of galactose, and lower one is the structure of fructose. And uh, remember, all these three molecules, they have the same formula, C6H12O6. But the arrangement of the different chemical uh, functional groups are different in these three. Uh, Monosaccharide. So, based on the arrangement of the different functional groups, uh, we can distinguish these uh, three uh, monosaccharides. And uh, examples for the disaccharides include uh, sucrose. Uh, it is also called as alpha D glucosyl 1 2 beta D fructose. Lactose, it is also called as beta D uh, galactosyl 1 2 4, uh, 1 4 beta D glucose. Maltose, uh, also known as alpha D glucosyl 1 4 alpha D glucose. So, in maltose, we can find that glucose and glucose 2 glucose molecules will be there. And in lactose, one galactose and one glucose molecule will be bind to each other with the glycosidic bond. In, in this diagram, uh, we can see this. Uh, uh, let me use it later. So, uh, so this is. Uh, galactose and this is a glucose these two things are uh, these two molecules are uh, attached to each other are linked to each other with this bond this bond is called as uh, what a glycosidic bond uh, coming to this uh, sucrose uh, in sucrose also one glucose molecule is there and, and another sucrose molecule is uh, sorry fructose molecule is there this glucose and uh, fructose molecules they are uh, linked to each other with this uh, one two carbons uh, with the glycosidic bonds. So, uh, so these are the examples of disaccharides. Coming to how this uh, formation of glycosidic bonds uh, will be done uh, in between these uh, molecules and how this uh, hydrolysis or digestion takes place, let us see. We can see that in this uh, slide. So, formation of uh, complex molecules from simpler molecules is called as condensation. So, in this uh, process, in this process, we can see that one glucose molecule and one fructose molecule, 
they are coming uh, in contact with each other. So, and they are losing a water molecule. So, by losing a water molecules, a glycosidic bond will be formed in between these two molecules uh, in uh, between glucose and fructose. So, when a water molecule is removed from them, a glycosidic bond connects these two molecules, and this glycosidic bond makes them into diacetyl. So in condensation process, what's happening? In condensation process, one water molecule will be removed from these two simpler molecules. And in hydrolysis process, what's happening? One water molecule is added to these, uh, uh, what are the disaccharides? So when one water molecule is added, again, what's happening? They will be separated as uh, two monosaccharides. So in this way, one water molecule is removed, condensation or uh, formation of complex molecule will be done. And one water molecule is added to the complex molecules, hydrolysis or digestion process takes place. So this is the difference between condensation and hydrolysis. So hydrolysis is breaking down the complex molecules into simpler molecules. So this is called as digestion. So, and uh, third group of uh, carbohydrates, uh, polysaccharides. Uh, examples for this polysaccharides is amylose. Uh, so, this is uh, also called as starch. And uh, another one is glycogen. Glycogen is animal starch. So, both are the almost same uh, in structurally. So, but glycogen is present in animals and amylose is present in plants. So in these things, many glucose molecules, they are linked to each other, with many glycosidic bonds, so that a bigger chain, uh, a bigger branch chaining, uh, chain, branch chains will be formed. Uh, and these bigger branch chains uh, are called as polysaccharides, as they are having many monosaccharide units in them. So and our food uh, mostly can consist of this uh, starch uh, uh, only. So in order to, uh, utilize uh, the eaten food, uh, the starch has to be broken down into simpler molecules or monosaccharides. So that makes the uh, essence of the digestion process. So coming to the digestion of carbohydrates, uh, where it occurs. Uh, so in our digestive system, various parts are there starting from mouth to uh, uh, anus. So in these different parts, uh, digestion of carbohydrates uh, takes place only in three parts. One is mouth, second uh, part is stomach, and third one is small intestine. So let us see how the digestion takes place in mouth. Uh, digestion of carbohydrates, how it occurs in mouth. So digestion of carbohydrates uh, uh, starts from the mouth itself. Uh, in mouth, food undergoes mastication with saliva. Mastication is nothing but chewing the food. So when we are chewing the food, what happens? Uh, saliva will mix with this uh, eaten food, and uh, the food will be made into a uh, ball-like structure with the help of this saliva. So uh, this uh, saliva contains carbohydrate splitting enzyme called as uh, hyaline or salivary amylase. So this uh, is a glycosidase enzyme. So this uh, thialine or salivary amylase enzyme will be present inside the saliva. It can digest the uh, polysaccharides into blood saccharides or monosaccharides. So action of salivary amylase or thialy. So salivary amylase uh, uh, chemically it is called as alpha amylase. So for the functioning of this alpha amylase enzyme it requires chloride ions. So when chloride ions present then only it will be activated and uh, it requires optimum pH uh, 6.7. So inside our mouth cavity uh, this uh, optimum pH will be there so that uh, the activity of amylase and uh, uh, in the presence of chloride ions uh, starts in the mouth itself. So salivary amylase hydrolyzes alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds of the polysaccharides. So, so in uh, the polysaccharides, uh, so 1,4 glycosidic bonds will be there in the monosaccharides in these polysaccharides. So these 1,4 glycosidic bonds only will be broken down by this uh, salivary amylase. So as a result of this uh, action of this salivary amylase, smaller molecules like uh, dextrin, maltose, maltotriose, uh, and uh, some portion of glucose also will be formed. So here one thing we have to remember is that salivary amylase cannot completely digest the polysaccharide. 
So once polysaccharides are completely digested, we can get only glucose, galactose, or fructose like that materials are completely monosaccharides only. But these dextins and maltoses and maltotrioses, they are not monosaccharides, they are oligosaccharides. So polysaccharide is a bigger chain, but these oligosaccharides are they are smaller chains. So these smaller chains they have not been digested completely. So actually salivary amylase can, it has the capacity of digesting the food material completely, but as the food cannot uh, stand or present inside the mouth for a longer time, so that uh, the salivary amylase activity cannot be, uh, uh, salivary amylase cannot completely digest the food material. Why? Because once the food reaches the stomach, inside the stomach pH uh, will be around 2 to 3 pH only. So pH very lower pH value will be there. In that lower pH uh, conditions, amylase, uh, salivary amylase cannot function so that uh, the digestion of uh, uh, polysaccharide stops inside the stomach. So salivary amylase action stops in the stomach. Why? Because stomach it is having low pH. So coming to the activity of uh, uh, this what uh, so uh, activity of how this uh, alpha amylase uh, digest is uh, what uh, polysaccharides. So in this diagram, this is a glycogen molecule or animal starch molecule. So as you are seeing, uh, glycogen is a branched polysaccharide chain. So in this thing, uh, so there are two types of bondings are there in this uh, monosaccharides in the glycogen molecule. One is 1,4 bondings and another one is 1,6 bondings. But this uh, alpha amylase works on only 1,4 bondings. So 1,6 bondings are not uh, digested with the help of alpha amylase. So this alpha amylase acts on only these pink color molecules or 1,4 bondings. So as a result of this alpha amylase activity, some uh, smaller chains will be formed and some, in some cases, uh, simpler single separated uh, small molecules also will be formed. So only limited amount of glucose or limited amount of monosaccharides will be formed as a result of uh, the activity of alpha amylase. Most of the parts uh, formed uh, with the help of, uh, with the activity of these alpha amylase are smaller chains and these smaller chains are called as dextrins and maltotrioses, maltoses, and isomaltoses. Maltose and isomaltoses, uh, these two are uh, disaccharides, and uh, maltotriose is, uh, it is a, a trisaccharide, or we may consider it as oligosaccharide also, and dextrin, it is invariably, it is also a oligosaccharide. So as a result of this alpha amylase or uh, salivary tylin, the food will be uh, digested only partially, not completely. So digestion in stomach, uh, so no carbohydrates will be uh, digested inside the stomach. Why? Because digestive juices are secreted into the stomach are called as gastric juice. The gastric juice will not contain any carbohydrates, splitting enzyme or any glycosidase enzyme. So that uh, digestion of uh, uh, what uh, carbohydrates will not occur mostly in the stomach. Some dietary sucrose may be hydrolyzed to equimolar amounts of glucose and fructose by HCl. So the only smaller portion of uh, uh, what dietary sucrose uh, or sugars uh, they will be uh, they may be converted into glucose and fructose by the activity of HCl. HCl, even though it is not an enzyme, uh, it can break uh, sucrose into glucose and fructose, but uh, it is not uh, occurring uh, completely. So only limited amount of a uh, small amount of sucrose only will be converted into glucose and fructose. So the third part, uh, the uh, uh, where the digestion of carbohydrates takes place is small intestine. In small intestine also, the starting part of the small intestine is called as duodenum. So as a result of this uh, digestion uh, in the stomach, the food enters into the duodenum in the form of uh, small, small bolus. So food bolus and enter into the duodenum. So uh, onto these food boluses, uh, this uh, pancreatic juice will be uh, released into this uh, food. So the pancreatic juice con contains pancreatic amylase and uh, this pancreatic amylase is similar to salivary amylase. 
So action of this pancreatic amylase coming to the uh, action of pancreatic amylase. Uh, this uh, pancreatic alpha amylase, uh, it requires optimum pH uh, uh, 7.1 and it also requires chloride ions like salivary amylase. So it specifically hydrolyzes alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds, uh, not an alpha 1,6 glycosidic bond. So and it produces uh, disaccharides uh, like maltose, isomaltose and oligosaccharides. So alpha amylase or uh, pancreatic amylase also, it is not completely digesting the polysaccharides. So uh, here stars are glycogen with the help of pancreatic amylase, they are being converted into, uh, they are being digested into uh, maltoses, isomaltoses and oligosaccharides. So pancreatic amylase, it is an isoenzyme of salivary amylase, uh, differs only in the optimum pH of the action. So only slight variation uh, is there in the uh, pH condition of both these two enzymes. Both the enzymes require chloride ions for their actions. So action of alpha amylase. So as a result of this uh, action of alpha amylase, as we have seen in the case of uh, salivary amylase also, so the bigger uh, the per chain it is the starch or polysaccharide. As a result of the salivary and pancreatic alpha amylase, uh, this bigger chain of starch is being broken into uh, disaccharides like maltose, isomaltose, and trisaccharides like uh, uh, oligosaccharides, larger uh, and uh, larger oligosaccharides like alpha dextrin. So next, uh, digestion in small intestine uh, in the upper jejunum. So digestion of carbohydrates mainly takes place in the small intestine by pancreatic amylase as the food stays for a longer time in this intestine. The final digestion of disaccharides and oligosaccharides to monosaccharides primarily occurs in the mucosal lining of the upper jejunum. So inside the upper jejunum, the uh, succus entericus will be released into this uh, jejunum part. So the succus entericus, uh, it is having uh, some special enzymes called as uh, disaccharides. So these disaccharides are called as maltase, sucrase, and lactase. So different types of disaccharides enzymes are there. So these disaccharides enzymes, they will digest the disaccharides into monosaccharides. So and apart from these disaccharides, some oligosaccharides are also present. So the oligosaccharides, uh, example for these oligosaccharides are glucoamylase. Uh, so this glucoamylase, it acts on amylose. So as a result of this uh, glucoamylase enzyme, uh, amylose will be uh, converted into disaccharides and uh, disaccharides they will be digested into monosaccharides with the help of disaccharides enzymes. So different types of uh, disaccharides uh, like uh, lactase. So lactase it is also called as a beta galactosidase enzyme. So this beta galactosidase or lactase enzyme it digests the lactose or uh, milk sugar uh, into glucose and galactose. Another one. Uh, isomaltase. This isomaltase it catalyzes 1,6 glycosidic bonds or dancing points. We have seen in the earlier tag, earlier slides. Uh, so once I 1,6 glycosidic bonds will be broken down only with the help of isomaltase enzyme. So this isomaltase enzyme uh, it digests the isomaltase uh, into maltose and glucose. So and again maltase enzyme. This malt this enzyme, it uh, hydrolyzes 1,4 glycosidic bonds uh, in the maltose sugar. Uh, say maltose sugar will be digested into glucose and uh, uh, glucose. Two glucose units will be there in the one maltose molecule. And another one uh, is sucrase enzyme. This sucrase enzyme, it uh, hydrolyzes or it digests the sucrose into glucose and fructose. So finally, <coughs> uh, coming to the uh, uh, what uh, total summary of this uh, uh, digestion of carbohydrates. So there are two types of uh, enzymes uh, present inside our uh, digestive juices. Uh, one is amylases and second one is disaccharides. So amylases, again, there are two types of amylases are there. One is salivary amylase and another one is pancreatic amylase. So these salivary and pancreatic amylases, what they will do? They will convert uh, polysaccharides into disaccharides. So, but these disaccharides are also, they are not simpler molecules, okay. So, these disaccharides have to be uh, 
further broken down into monosaccharides. That work will be achieved with the help of disaccharidases enzymes. So in disaccharidases enzymes, we have four types of disaccharidases. One is maltase, second one is sucrase, third one is lactase, and fourth one is isomaltase. So these will act on uh, different types of disaccharides. Maltase acts on maltose, sucrase acts on sucrose, lactase acts on lactose, and isomaltase acts on uh, isomaltose. So with the help of these uh, disaccharides enzymes, what happens finally, disaccharides will be broken down into monosaccharides. And this monosaccharides pool, it will contain glucose, galactose, fructose, like this uh, and uh, some uh, ribose deoxyribose also will be present uh, in the pool of monosaccharide so when the pool of monosaccharides is present inside the small intestine or the genome all these monosaccharides they will be absorbed into the uh, bloodstream uh, at uh, microbially region so once these uh, molecules they enter into the bloodstream a uh, blood uh, uh, transfers or transports them to all body parts. Then all body parts will uh, get these food molecules. So in this way, uh, carbohydrates are digested inside our digestive system. So that's it for today. Uh, in next class, we will discuss about uh, digestion of proteins. Thank you.